The Macintosh was introduced in 1984, and the most revolutionary piece of it was the software. It featured a graphical user interface that built on top of the Lisa operating system, but at a much lower cost. When the system started up, the user was greeted with a graphical desktop, which used familiar icons and menu names, which held commands to perform certain operations, so users wouldn't need to use command lines to type in commands. And these menu items and desktop icons were accessed with the cursor, which was controlled by the mouse, which was a newer piece of hardware at this time. Because of the graphical interface, typeface was very possible with the Macintosh, and it was a huge feature Steve Jobs wanted to push. The system came preloaded with several fonts, which we'll see in other applications, and it came with a font mover which helped users manage their font collection. We think of it as a trivial thing today, but back in this time, having windows which contained graphics for different applications and having them draggable across the screen was a huge deal. One menu item in the Finder was the View menu, which allowed users to view folders in different lists or with an icon view. Another menu option was Get Info, which displayed information for files such as file size. The Apple menu was home to desk accessories, which were little applets that could run on top of other Mac programs. Users could load things like an alarm clock, a calculator, or a control panel to change settings. Another useful accessory was the notepad, which let users write notes. Another useful accessory was an on-screen keyboard which allowed users to use a mouse to input characters. MacDraw is a good example of a program that could run on the early Macintosh system. This program could be used for creating graphical designs. The menu commands allowed users to select fonts, font styles, sizes, pen styles, different types of strokes, and fill patterns. Another big deal about programs like this was users could copy graphics and paste them into other applications, or they could paste them inside of the scrapbook, and users could access it from within other apps. The Finder was capable of copying files from one disk to another, but if users didn't have the luxury of having two floppies mounted simultaneously, they would need to swap disks. Like mentioned earlier, the Macintosh could run accessories on top of other apps, but if a user wanted to switch to another program, they would need to shut down the program they were currently using to go back to the Finder to load up something else. The original Macintosh only had one internal drive bay, so in most cases, users could only have one disk inserted at a time. If a user needed to insert a new disk, they could eject the old one from the Finder. The disk would come out of the computer, but the icon would still stay on the desktop so they can access it later. When they loaded something off of the disk, the Finder would say, please insert this disk. Users could insert the disk, and then the programs would continue running. If users were completely finished with a disk, they could eject them and then drag the icon to the trash. So there you have it, a quick tour of the early Macintosh system software. Don't forget to subscribe to stay in touch with more Real Deal videos and click that like button if you liked the video. In addition, check out our largest production to date. It is now available, you do not want to miss this. And if you want to see more content from us, or apply for a YouTube partnership, visit us on our other great websites.